Hello and uh, welcome everybody to this uh, tutorial. Russian fishing for we are at Amber Lake. And today we're going uh, regular carp fishing. Um, what that means is we're basically going for the um, most common uh, carps that you can find here on Amber Lake, which would be the common carp, that would be the mirror carp, uh, the frame sided carp, and possibly some ghost carps as well. Um, for this, um, what we do is uh, I'm going to show you two spots that are currently working for me. Um, I don't have the best gear, as you can see, I'm not the highest of levels either, but this lake works wonders for me. Let me quickly show you what uh, kind of rods I have here first. Uh, we're going to start with this one. This is my best setup uh, that I have. And it basically just works with a Narga 8000. You don't need uh, a really high reel to have some fun over here. This one can hold 26 and a half kilos. So based on that, I have put a 23.7 uh, kilo line on there and also a 25 kilo leader. Since the places that I am going to fish at are clay bottom, I have a clay carp lead core and also a clay um, little uh, sinker here. I usually go with a size one on the hook. Um, you can also go a little bit higher or a little bit lower, depending on what you want. Um, for now, on this one, I have... Uh, actually, I have this on all the three uh, the rods right now, which would be the Old Pal Cocos and Cream 16 pop-up and the Old Pal Cocoa and Cream flavor white. And why did I do that? That is because at this moment, the weekly records for Amber Lake. Let's just go with the common carp to show you an example. Uh, where is it? <clears throat> here it is. Uh, the common carp over here, you will see Cocos and Cream. Let's find the other one. The common carp goes, here is Cocos and Cream as well. Well, here it is. And here is it as well. And then we go for the frame sided ghost carp, or the normal frame sided carp, sorry. You will find more cocos and cream everywhere. Obviously, the things I'm showing you right now, basically not there. But it still works. Um, depending on um, whatever you do or wherever you go, um, you might want to change the dip a little bit. On this one, for example, I have the Coco Nectar. It is not that expensive to buy, so I wouldn't really worry about that too much. Um, on this one, I basically have the same over here, also Coco Nectar, with uh, the Coco and Cream stuff. The only difference here is that this rod cannot handle 26.5, but 19.5. And with that, we have adjusted the lines to a 19.1 and 18.1 later um, but other than that like you see I have a hook that is a little bit bigger doesn't really make a lot of difference um, on this one this is my worst rod I would say but it still works 14.5 kilos see uh, it's the Fantasia FD 410 and accordingly to that I have changed lines to 12.8 and 13.8 liter. On this one, I do have the Old Pal Cream, but let me show you what else I have for this. Um, <clears throat> I have these dips, right? The banana, the cocoa nectar, the Old Pal Cream. The tuna oil you should not use unless you wanna go for um, Red Star Voss carbs, but that is something completely different. I also have Tutti Fruities here. Um, the Coco Nectar and the Tutti Frutti are my two favorites. The banana works at times, so does the El Old Pal Cream. doesn't work all the time. <clears throat> but, <clears throat> alright, let me go ahead and uh, <clears throat> pack these up. Sorry, my voice is cracking a little bit there. Alrighty. Now, what two locations do I have in mind? They're not really that much of a surprise if you have been to Amber Lake before. Uh, for the sake of this tutorial, I will just buy a ticket so I can show you what I'm doing. Just because I'm a lazy bastard. <clears throat> Alrighty. 
So the first one is going to be, uh, I, from the top of my head, it's 9464. It's not too far from the little town over here. You could just walk over there if you wanted to. I don't think the ATV is really worth the money, but it is what it is. All right, over here, we're almost at the spot already. Little dock here, there we go. All right, so once we get here, um, I always put my uh, retrieval speed up to 50, my friction brake to about 20, 21, and on this location, the clipping would have to be 35 meters. You could do 40 meters as well. Don't worry too much about it. What I usually do is I cast, you see a little log over there, you see a little whatever that is over there, and you have a dock over there as well. I always go somewhere in between the log and the dock, so like somewhere around here, and just, since I don't have the ability to cast very far yet, I just go full speed, and it barely reaches 35 meters. So, we pull the line tight, obviously. We put this one up to 50 retrieval speed, 2021 friction brake, and making sure the clipping is set at 35. We aim towards that section again. We put it down, and we continue. We do the same for this one. Friction brake up to 21. The clipping up to 35. And just a little bit to the right on that one. Oops, that was a little too close. All right. For now, we're just gonna have to wait. Oh, we already have a bite. It is about the right time for the fish to start biting again, 4.30 in the morning. It's not gonna do what I hope it would do, but let me tell you, this is a spot that I usually make about 150 silver to, if a good day happens, 300 silver an hour, which is not bad for, you know, everything that you do here. Obviously, you could say, like you could argue, um, I make a lot more silver on wherever you do it, Actuba with the pike fishing or the e-breams or anything like that. This is just having a lot of fun. Um, if you'd like to go bottom feeder fishing, this is the place to be. Um, as you can see, I have a pretty decent bite over here already. It's not gonna be too big. I, I guess it's gonna be about five or six kilos. But it's a good start. I had 23 kilo mirror carp on this exact spot uh, a day or two ago, which is nearly a trophy. I haven't gotten a trophy except for a gibble carp other than that, but it is just having fun here. This is not about, you know, being busy constantly 24 seven. This is just like you would in real life, go carp fishing, wait a little bit, have the next fish in, Oh, it's actually more than five or six kilos. Well, there you go, nine kilos almost on the first one. We toss it back in there. Yes, cat, I know you like fishes as well. Thank you for your comments on that one. I have very, um, how would you say it? Talkative cats. So if you hear them during the uh, tutorials or any other videos that I put out, you know why. He's uh, still going at it. Yeah, he's one of those cats that likes to go outside, but he can't because he gets into trouble. All right, I plan on uh, staying here for just a little bit, guys, not too long, because I do want to show you the other spot as well. Um, I got to admit, for some reason, this rod is always the one that gets most of the bites, even though it is exactly the kind of setup that I have on this one. Um, maybe for a little bit difference in the lines and the leaders but other than that it is exactly the same but for some reason this one usually gets more bites than that one this one I should say almost thankfully gets the least amount of bites because this simply isn't as good of a rod as the other two 
I am currently working on uh, getting myself a new rod. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, I think I need about a thousand silver for that to get myself a, I think it was 25 kilo rod. I forgot which one it was uh, from the top of my head, but you don't need a lot of silver to uh, be able to fish here. And you do make, like I said, you make about 150 to 300 silver an hour, depending on how busy it is and uh, what kind of fish you're looking for. There is, like I said, the red star fish, which gets you a lot of money and a lot of experience as well. But the setup for that is completely different. I love these frame-sided carps. They just look badass. They usually are pretty decent in size as well. The XP isn't bad. Like you can tell, I don't have premium or anything. Still three and a half thousand XP points for that one, if I keep it. Uh, otherwise it would be even a lot more. And there you go. I have another bite on the first line. And this is how I'm just gonna continue going. Let's get some energy into the system. All right, let's see what this fish is doing. Not a whole lot right now. Is it going or is it not going? There we go, it is going. I think the one thing I have learned about Amber Lake is I gotta be patient. I sometimes want to go too fast, like if the line goes flat for about half a second, I sometimes jump on it straight away. I shouldn't do that. I lose a lot of fish because of it. And why would you do that? A little common carp here. It's not too big, two kilos. It happens sometimes that you get one of those as well. All right, I'm gonna get one more fish, hopefully within the next minute or so. And uh, once we're done with that, we will be going to the other location. If nothing happens, we're just gonna get the lines in and uh, move along as well. But like I said, I've just been here for oh, just three minutes, three fish already. Can't complain about that, especially if you compare to, I would say Bear Lake, I, um, have not been back to Bear Lake since I rejoined the game um, but before and I'm talking about six months ago uh, Bear Lake was terrible I would be able to like sit there for hours and hours and hours on end just trying to do what I'm doing here now relaxed bottom feeder fishing for carbs and get like two or three fish an hour it was simply terrible I have no clue if that is still what's going on at Bear Lake, because I simply have not been back there. I'm kind of traumatized by it. Alrighty. Seems like we're not getting much happening here right now. Oh, there is a bite on that one, obviously, right when I uh, pull this one in. Let me just quickly get this one in. This was on the Old Pal Cream, so it's not really doing the trick right now, but that's okay. Uh, we can always switch it up. Tutti Frutti, that is uh, my favorite second uh, after the Coco uh, cream one. This one is uh, a little fatty. It's not too bad, but it is a little fatty. I, I find it that on this lake, uh, you have to play with your friction break a little bit. Um, like you can see right now, it is going. There's no reason I should put it in the red when it's uh, actively uh, swimming away, that will just damage your reel. If I was to like do it right now, like just reeling it in, and I have to go in the red a little bit, that is not too awful. Um, it is what it is right now. All right, let's just continue getting this one in. It's it's a little different sometimes. Alright, this is a mistake I used to make. Whenever it was taking off, I would continuously uh, try to like go like this and this and this. Hopefully it would get back in, right? That damages my reel more than I would wish for, kind of thing. There is no reason to do that. So whenever it's taking off, just let go of your left mouse button or whatever you use to reel the fish in. 
and just patiently wait. And it can happen when you reload in, you still hear the uh, friction brake going off. That is not the end of the world. That is kind of what you want to have. Uh, it doesn't need to be like crazy, of course. But if you go fishing in real life and you have a carp on the line, you also want the friction brake to kind of tick so you know you have it set to the right setting. And of course my phone's going off right as we're recording this, that is very handy. And this fish is still going. Alrighty, it stopped going off. Alright. I kind of forgot that. Oh, well, the fish got away. It happens sometimes. I can't really do much about it. It usually happens to me on the uh, larger fish, like say 10 kilo and up. It happens that the fish do get away. Kind of embarrassing to show that on the tutorial, but it is what it is, right? I'm also seeing, I'm kind of running out of pop-up boilies right now, but that's okay. I'm just gonna show you the other location. Um, probably cast once or twice and uh, that's about it. I'll be back with you once I get there. guys we have arrived at the spot the spot coordinates are 120 155 let me show you on the map where that is that is right over here in g3 we were over here earlier so we just took a little trip over here went down the road and we are now here all right so what what's different over here not much uh, you just change the clipping um, what you could do is you could cast 45 meters. What I'm going to do is because I don't have the ability to cast 45 meters, I put it at 20. Why 20? Because apparently that works. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have no explanation for it otherwise. Over there you see a little boat. You want to cast a little bit to the left of uh, that boat over there. You want to give it about whatever you need to go 20 meters and put it down. Like I said, you could also do 45 meters. That is totally up to you. I am not uh, gonna be able to tell you how that works because I simply cannot get that far. But again, just because you can't do one thing doesn't mean you can't do other things either. And put this one to 20 as well. A little bit to the left of that one. It's not always going to go at the exact location you want it to be. You could even like get out your little swing shot, put that to 20 meters as well, and uh, just go a full 100% and swap. Again, it's not going to be completely accurate. doesn't matter. It works, this location, for me usually. Um, the old pal over here, that one has not been working during the entire duration of this tutorial, but that's okay. Um, let's see, we were at uh, the other location for about five minutes and we had these three fish. I'm not counting the one that got away. That is not even a, a, a countable stat right there. Let's just forget that ever happened. Um, as you can see, I already have a bite again and it, it's taking off slowly. So we're just gonna, I always press the R button for some reason that is just a tick to make sure there is a fish on there. And uh, yeah, each of these fish is uh, the ones about, um, I would say this one is gonna be worth about 20 silver, this is gonna be worth about 10, and this is probably worth scrap. But still, it, it adds up. Um, you have to see it like this. Every time you cast it into the water, um, 
you use one pop-up, you use one uh, flavor, uh, like the, the artificial corn, and you use a little bit of dip. So I see it about, I would say two to three silver every fish you reel in. As long as you get above that average, you make decent money. All right, again, we have another bite. I didn't have a bite on this one because I just forgot to pull the line. Let's see what it does. It does happen. There we go. Flat line. It stays there for more than half a second. So we're going for it. Like when you get a flat line, wait a little bit, guys, because it's not worth it. I'm not getting any tagged fish right now, which is quite a surprise. I usually do. Does not do not let that this encourage you um, just because I'm being a failure right now and again this one is not getting any bites um, I might as well change this one quickly to the tutti frutti see if that does anything but I wouldn't be too worried about it honestly uh, tutti frutti let's get you out of there another bite on the second rod like I said these locations have been working for me for I would say the better part of a week now, so I don't see why they wouldn't in the future. Let's just get this one in, and uh, we'll end the tutorial for here. Like I said, if you want to have a relaxed fishing trip on Amber Lake, the new lake within Russian Fishing 4, you need to be level 26 for it. Um, it costs about 30 silver to get here, and that's all you really need. Um, I want to thank you all for uh, stopping by. Make sure to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is a new channel. I really appreciate it. And I am um, streaming on Twitch almost daily at twitch.tv slash slooch. Thank you, guys, and uh, see you next time.